Let's go ahead and slow down time. And we'll go past the scary spider, man. Avoid the traps because they're everywhere. They will kill us all the time. Uh, and avoid this. Whoa! I will kill you all the time. You will die a lot. You will die. Stupid. Get. No. Get. No. No. Get. No. Let me past. Let me past. Thank you. Stupid gutting spider. You'll not make us your meal. You know why? Because you can't make a meal of what will be peeled. <laughs> Battle here, right? Yeah. Oh ho. Oh, it's hard and dry when we hang the the golems up high. And um this is kind of morbid, but their blood drips on the crown. <laughs> we'll hang them up high. And then their families will cry as we, ow, get blown up by the headless monk. Make all the Doctor Who references and props to who can recognize this song. This song that I'm singing right now, which I'll probably get content ID'd for. Oh, Mr. Monk, you will die a horrible death besides the one where you lost your head and... Suffer till you're dead. Uh, then you befriended someone ma named Ted. That's all I got. Really, it's all I got. Anyway, hey guys and gals, I'm Palin. Oh, oh, welcome to this episode. No, this is not episode, what is it, 50 something. This is actually episode 79. So why am I in Oni Island? Well, funny you should ask that. Um, since this is the glitches video, we're going to be starting it off with a bang. A big bang. Which big bang, you say? Well, not number one, because that was actually faked. Um, <clears throat> it was... Big Bang 1 was faked by Abraham Lincoln and President Nixon. Um, yeah, they they were in cahoots together. Check check the history books. It's, it's true. The greatest wizard of all time, Abraham Lincoln, and the red-haired guy... Nixon, they, President Nixon, they, they went in cahoots and they faked Big Bang. Anyway, we're getting this st started off with a bang uh, in a glitch that I almost discovered myself. I was that close. I, I had the A and the C, but I didn't have the B. And so I'm going to be supplying the B here today. It's not actually really a glitch, but a sequence break. But I liked it. It was cool. I almost stumbled across it. And so don't judge me. I'm doing this. You, you have no say. You don't You don't know. Anyway, I've, I've wasted minutes of this episode. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this started. If you remember, I'll just give you a quick re recap. Ah, uh, you. Uh, we came through there and raced Toby a couple times. And what should happen is we go out here after fighting a battle with some headless monks, which I made a song about. You guys remember that? Um, and we defeat the, the blockhead. And then we go by, and Toby's right there. But this se sequence break, uh, it involves us skipping the blockhead and just going straight to Toby. You can see Toby on that balcony over there. So what you're supposed to do, once again, this is I have I had the A and the C, but not the B, is if you blow if you blow up that crack in the wall right now. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. You cannot do that from the other side of the wall. That's what confused me. I went over there. I was on the other side of the wall prior in the in the Let's Play. But I tried to blow it up then, and that doesn't work. But if we blow it up here and now, we can actually jump up and see. But you're probably saying, pal, that doesn't make any difference. The balcony's too high. We cannot reach it. Wrong. There's a Konohana Blossom over there that is within brush range. We can use the cone on the blossom and get all the way over here. We were not supposed to do this. This is not how you do this. But I did it anyway. So I'm up here. This is the this is the seed. This is the destination. All that I was missing was the method and going on the other side. Now if we jump over here, we can talk to Toby. I will skip Toby because I don't want dumb scrap of paper. Didn't mean to do that. 
Uh, we can get some free money here. But more importantly, you can see we're on the other side of Blockhead. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to go over here, defeat him, and then come over here. So we we did it. We skipped. And more importantly, normally what you do is you'd run, jump, and then you could blow up the, the wall midair. Or you could just blow it up prior and then go. But now that we've already done that and we have that that method in mind, we can actually a little bit break this this race. That Konohana Blossom's in range, so if I just do this, he starts off. I Konohana Blossom over there. I beat him entirely. There you go. And Toby's dead. Yeah. And his flowers in midair. So, there it is. The first glitch of a bunch. There are a couple that I'm going to be showing. Not as many as Skyward Sword and not nearly as assorted or complicated, but they are glitches and so I will be showing them. So, on to the next glitch. We got this off to a very good start and I am happy with this. Next glitch, please roll it, future pal. That I will. The next glitch on our list is the Killing Hayabusa glitch found in Kamiki Village after obtaining Thunderbolts. Wow, I can't believe I did that first try. Wow, that was good. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing that in, in one second, but I want to get a couple things out of the way first. Uh, it is the Day of Darkness right now. This is the save file right before I went to the Ark of Yamato in the Let's Play, so my money should match up to that episode. If not, then there's something wrong, but there isn't, so it should match up. And the Oni Island footage that you just saw was not recorded when I was in Oni Island. It was actually recorded shortly before this was. And that's interesting because that was a Let's Play save file that I saved the entire time. Not because of that glitch, but because I just happened to save all the files. I showed that last episode how I backed up um, all of the episodes. So you uh, can actually go back there and my money, once again, should match the episode. So you can kind of tell uh, which episode that was that I did the glitch, or which save file I used, rather. So, now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and jump down. I can show you guys this glitch. There's been enough idle talking about Abraham Lincoln and President Nixon this episode. There doesn't need to be more. So, Hayabusa is right here. We kind of want Hayabusa to be away from Mushi. Just a little bit. There you go. That's good. So, the basis for this is that if you hit uh, Hayabusa, while she's, or he, is in his tumble animation, uh, if you hit him with something that causes a different animation to occur, then that should keep the momentum from the first animation, but carry through the second. Um, that sounds a little bit complicated, but you'll see what I mean in just a second. So basically, how you perform this glitch is you hit Hayabusa, and immediately after, you hit Hayabusa with lightning. I know, it's just not, it's not Hayabusa's day. And I do it first time. No. But that was like the form, the uh, method that I did that glitch was actually spot on. So I just have to do that a couple more times. And I should have it. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. I shouldn't need to cut ahead for this. I should probably get the camera up close. That's that's a better tip. So let me inc wait for my ink to respawn. Uh, I shouldn't need to speed this up because it is actually a very, very easy glitch to perform. I did it um, in practice, first or second try, so I should do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and hit Hayabusa, and then use Thunderbolt. Uh, no, I did not do it. Um, I don't know, I guess I can go ahead and cut ahead. That'd work. There it is! There it is! He actually respawned, but that's fine. It still worked out. Um, basically what it does is, during his tumble animation, he goes upward, then downward, right? Well, my theory is that causing him to go into a separate animation uh, keeps his momentum. So he would go up and down, but it stops him in place, then the downward, um, the downward momentum kicks in, and the animation's not meant to actually move. The shaking animation of being zapped, it's not supposed to move. It's supposed to stay uh, still. So it's not programmed for any collision, like collision with the ground. And so Hayabusa should phase through the ground, like he did here, and disappear entirely. He's not dead. He's just below the ground somewhere. I can't talk to him. I can't target him. I can't hit him. He's just below the ground somewhere. And that's it. We killed Hayabusa. 
May he rest in lightning embers, I guess. Whatever it is, whatever the byproduct of being hit by lightning is, that's what he's resting in right now. Now we'll have a moment of silence for Hayabusa. Okay, that's enough silence. Uh, on to the next glitch. That was actually a pretty easy glitch, and it didn't take much time, so uh, this episode shouldn't be too long, as long as I don't ramble, which I probably will at the end, because it's the end of a Let's Play. And actually, for the next glitch, we don't have to go very far. We just have to go into Shinshu Field, and uh, we're right next to where the next glitch will be performed. Uh, let's go. The next glitch involves us phasing through the ground. Now, this one isn't very special, uh, because most, if not all, 3D platforming games, or 3D games in general, involve something similar to this. Man, even Luigi's Mansion has it, uh, where you can cheat the system, phase through a wall, and skip to things, or just be kind of out of bounds and have fun. Ocarina of Time actually has one of my favorite vi glitches in all video games, where you can phase through the ground and ultimately get somewhere where you're not supposed to be um, when you're an adult in that game, and that's that's really neat. But this one, there's nothing really special to it, except for something that we see while we are out of bounds, which makes me want to show this glitch for all that it's worth. You can see that lily pad, that actually means that I've tried the glitch before and it didn't work at the time. What is that pink thing? Is that like a... Is that like a... I have no clue what that is. Uh, this glitch involves a uh, lily pad and also the water tablet. The water tablet isn't actually required to perform the glitch, but I highly advise you use it because otherwise you're, you're trying to navigate while swimming and that's really hard. So, uh, the premise of this is that when you create a lily pad on the edge of a waterfall, it will launch itself along the edge into that wall. If you're riding on it, there's a chance that it will push you through the wall and into the water below. There's actually water inside that wall, which we will see in one second, but uh, that's the premise for the glitch. As for performing it, you just want to make the li lily pad right here, and then once you're on it, you want to unequip the water tablet and just ride. And it didn't work, but that's fine. I showed you guys how to do it, and I'll give it one, uh, one or two more goes on camera, quote unquote camera, uh, after that, then I will just cu cut ahead to me getting it right, because this glitch doesn't require any amount of skill to perform. It just requires a little bit of chance, honestly. I haven't found a method for getting it every time, and I kind of doubt that there is one. Just based on the physics of the game and how things work, um, I don't think that there's a sure-fire way to do it. Um, but I do advise a couple of things. You should do it in the middle of the waterfall. Not, uh, not one edge. You shouldn't do it near the far edge. You shouldn't do, do it near the close edge. It just seems to work the best this way. So I'll try it one more time, then I'll cut ahead to me getting it right, since this is incredibly redundant and most of the time is spent in menus. So let's go ahead and unequip this. Another piece of advice... I failed horribly. Another piece of advice is to kind of stay near the water's edge uh, while you're on the lily pad, because it comes up a little bit of ways up onto the lily pad, and you want to stay near that, but not close enough to it that you'll actually be swimming. So, let me go ahead and cut ahead to the successful uh, attempt of this.
Yes! Oh, finally! Oh, finally, now I need to equip the water tablet so I don't drown. Man, that actually took... That took a long time. I think that took 15 minutes. About 15 minutes. And that wasn't that fun. It was pretty monotonous. But there it is. It pushed me below the world, so I'm now inside a solid stone rock. And there's water down here. Because that's basic game design. Uh, if you walk over here, then that is a pit. You will die. Uh, pretty much where the water stops, you will fall and you will die. I think I said that before. And Yeah, I get a little bit creeped out with these types of things. We encountered one instance of this. It's actually a bunch of instances of this in Skyward Sword in the glitches video for that. And it honestly disturbs me a little bit because it's just an abyss with nothing in it. Like, you'd be falling forever if this were an actual thing. But, uh, thank goodness, it isn't an actual thing. And there's something over there. You see that? This is why I performed this glitch and why I'm going to per be performing uh, two such glitches just like this uh, in this episode. Because there's stuff below the world. There's something down there that I'm hoping I'll run into. Even better, I'm hoping that I will fall in it because it's really cool. Uh, now that we're done with this, I'm going to do just that and jump below and see some pretty cool stuff. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't turn, ni don't turn uh, nighttime. There, okay. Now, let's jump down there. And there's, there's the mailman. Okay, let's jump down. And we're in an abyss, which is scary. Now, if we pan around here, there's a chance that we will see something kind of special. Maybe. Oh, there it is. There it is. Right there. I kind of wish I had aimed better, but you can see there's actually a house way, way down below here. Like, really far. And there's fire in this house. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth is this? Is this beta? What is it? No. This is a place you can actually go. This is Thomas' house. The inside. The outside is up there somewhere. And the inside is right here. So this is where you load into when you're in Thomas' house, when you enter. Um, now, I'm not sure, but I want to try. Whenever you plant a bomb, Tama does something. I want to see if I can plant a bomb in there and see if he does anything. I doubt I'll hit it. Did I hit it? I'm not sure if I got it, but I'll just trust that I might have. You actually got to see Tama there real quick. Okay, blew up, but Tama didn't do anything. And that's it. We did it. We're back on the surface, and I kind of want to try the glitch again. I'm going to try it once. Because, you know, once you once you do something correctly, you want to try to replicate it to make sure it wasn't just chance. Okay, I'm, I'm terrible. Let's go. Okay, the next glitch and the final glitch for this episode is in Ryoshima Coast. Okay, let's equip this thing. Uh, this one is much easier to perform. It requires no items. You can actually do it as soon as you enter Ryoshima, which is actually quite cool that there's a glitch open like that. Um, so many glitches, you need something, um, and this one, you don't. Although none of these are really sequence break worthy. I liked the, one in, the ones in Skyward Sword. Also, I'm kind of stuttering here. I liked the ones in Skyward Sword because you could break them. You could, you could break the game with them. Um, things like putting the stone in that one statue. I'm being vague on purpose for those who haven't watched the Let's Play. Um, doing things like that that cause the game to freeze, or um, jumping across a gap and getting out of bounds to skip a gigantic portion of the game, conceivably. Those are cool, but these, they're, they kind of really get us nowhere. They're just tidbits, the ways you can break the game. Um, but they're, they're cool nonetheless. So, let's go ahead and go in this and go to Ryoshima. Now, one thing I also need to clarify, I'm not showing graphical glitches here for a reason. Uh, this game's art style and the fact that it's one of the first games to utilize this uh, lend themselves to the fact that it will have its flaws. We've encountered a couple of them and they are bad. Uh, like I said, since there are a lot of them, I don't feel like I should show that off. It's just not something that interests me. I don't want to be showing off graphical glitches, because those 
those are far too common, far too random as well. They can depend on your game disc, and they're not something that's exploited at all. So, uh, let's see, where is this? Oh yeah, it's right over here, at the base of these stairs. I actually talked about this once, but I didn't understand the glitch at the time. Um, if you if you go right here on these stairs, you just kind of walk around a little bit. There's a hole in the ground that you should fall through. It requires no skill at all. There it is. Yeah, you see how easy that was? I just walked right into it. So, there's another way that you can get through the world. Isn't that cool? Now there's... I've seen a video of someone doing this, and there's actually apparently... There it is, there he is, there he is. There's an NPC down here. There's a, there's a person all the way down here. Now, you could argue that this is actually above ground, that person's above ground, but that is actually too close, and we've fallen too far for that to be above ground. And that's actually the beach. There is no one over there. So there's some player, I mean, some character below the ground. In fact, uh, I can go that direction and I can show you. Because the direction is that way, I believe. Yeah, and this is the only guy around. And we fell for quite some time before we saw this person. And we did weren't looking up that far. So it was not this guy. So that's kind of interesting that there's a person below there. Now, again, I saw this in a video um, where I discovered it. I'll put the link in the description. All credit for this glitch does go to this person, same with all the others. Um, a couple of them are just kind of widely known glitches. It's hard... What? Yes. Yes, Isun. You get one more shot. That was that was your shot. Uh, yeah, there's actually a person apparently below uh, Shinshu Field, but I have not seen this person myself, so I can't say that with 100% certainty. But... That is actually it for the glitches. Sorry about the cut there, I just had to take care of something that happened in the background. Uh, my furnace went on, and I didn't want it making some very cheap static noise while I was talking. So I went ahead and turned that off, and now, now it's good. Now you guys shouldn't be hearing anything in the background, which is how I normally record. So anyway, as I was saying, those are all the glitches I would like to show for this episode, which means, by association, that's all I like to show for this Let's Play. I've shown everything. I've done a 100% run of the game. I've done all the de Devil Gates. I defeated all the bosses. I did everything. Every side quest. Just 100%. And I'm very proud of it. But, I would like to do a 100% Let's Play of this game. I just don't want... I don't want to just 100% this game. And what I mean by that is I want to fill you guys in on two last pieces of information that I found to be really cool and very, very interesting. One is the box art to the game. Um, if you look at it, you'll see that it contains, right near Matarasu's snout, uh, a watermark uh, of a symbol. And that symbol is the IGN logo, which is kind of strange, but... The developers, or more importantly, the art designer, when he was making the art for this game, he didn't want to contact Ready at Dawn to find the art, so he just pulled something off the internet, since some art had already been released, and didn't realize that the art he grabbed was something from IGN's site. And IGN does watermark all of their pictures, so that actually made it into the final cover that was mass-produced across North America. Yeah, that was a bit of an oops, and Capcom was so apologetic that they actually made a- they, they started a recall on all the copies so that they could replace the art free of charge. They were that sorry about it, and that's- that's quality right there. That's customer service. So, that was kind of cool, and also in the description of this video, I will put the links to two more videos that contain the death animations, since, believe it or, believe it or not, I never died in this game, not once in this Let's Play, which is something that I can be immensely proud of, especially in the Devilgate Trial Caves. I never lost one thing of my Astro Pouch, and my Golden Peach record speaks for itself. I have 15 left, so I have, what, 14? No, uh, 18, 19, 19 lives. I have 19 lives left, which is very impressive. I'm, I'm proud of myself. I did a good job. Even if this let's play, if even if no one liked this let's play, I can at least take comfort in the fact that I never died. Uh, but as I was saying, the death animations will be put in the description, and also the game over animation. Now, normally I wouldn't bother with something as trivial as a couple of animations, 
But you guys know Okami. This game is very good. This story is very good. And by association, like I said before, the story carries over into everything, including the deaths, especially the game over animation. If you look at it, Amaterasu turns into a statue and then is destroyed. And that bears some significance because Shirinui, if you remember, died. And the next we saw of Shirinui was just a statue. It was a statue that Amaterasu was later resurrected from. Now, I assumed when I first played through this game that the statue was just that. It was just a statue created by the villagers as an effigy to Shirinui. But it wasn't. It was Shirinui, him or her or itself. Um, since Amater when Amaterasu dies completely, she turns into a statue, you can assume that after Shirinui died from... Uh, her, his or her or its wounds uh, from the twin demons Lechku and Nechku and Orochi, it turned into a statue and the villagers created a shrine around that statue. They didn't make the statue themselves. Which is kind of an, in an interesting fact. It's something I never thought of before. It was an angle that I never considered until just recently when I looked that up. I didn't honestly think about it. So yeah, that is actually, that's it. Now, like I said, the Let's Play is 100% done. I've shared everything I wanted to share with you guys, and more. I've shared my honest reactions to the game as I replayed it for the first time in years. And I've done all I wanted to. So, the next Let's Play, the next game, the next project, the next videos you'll see on this channel are going to be a Let's Play, which is going to be much, much shorter than this game. I won't spoil what the game is. But it's something that I've never covered before. Well, obviously, but it's a genre I have never covered before. It's it's very interesting. I've covered a horror game, which I never thought I would do in the past year. I've covered a real-time strategy game in Pikmin. Um, I've covered a couple of sort of RPGs, I guess. Okami and Skyward Sword. And I'm very proud of that. And I've reviewed a couple games along the way as well. And... I, I'm summing this up because it's been a year since I created this channel, since I released my first video. And so one of the videos you guys will be getting is an anniversary video, a video of sorts. It will contain some stats and some of my reflections over the past year, and some of my, my thoughts about the future of the channel. So you guys can look forward to that. Uh, there are a couple of other videos I'd like to release in between Let's Plays besides just Five Nights at Freddy's, so you can be looking forward to those. Uh, the schedule will still be the same for the next Let's Play, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, so you don't have to be looking on Mondays because you think I'm going to surprise you. No, I'll, I'll stay predictable in that sense. I just will stay surprising in the sense that I'm not telling you what Let's Play it is. So yeah, I think that's all I need to say, honestly. There's nothing more I need to say. That's it. And I won't draw this outro out like I do most of my Let's Plays. I'll just end it here. If you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. And also give me tips for the first episode of the next Let's Play, since I've done first episodes as many times as I've done ending the Let's Play. So give your comments on that. And that's going to be it. I'll see you guys next time for another Gutter Speak Free LP here on Paladin Plays. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a lot. And if, you, if I didn't have any viewership, I wouldn't be making videos still. I would have stopped with Skyward Sword. So, with that in mind, let's go to the next Let's Play with Vigor, with Bravo, with Johnny, and also Bravo. Plenty of Johnny and plenty of Johnny Bravo. <laughs> See you guys then.